So as we learned in the previous lesson, the mathematical treatment of longitudinal waves is almost the same as transverse waves, but with some minor changes in the way we look at such waves visually. So what we learn in this lesson are two things. One, what is the equation that defines a longitudinal wave and how do we interpret it? And two, why do we call such waves pressure waves? And what is the equation that defines a pressure along the wave? So before we go ahead, I would like you to subscribe to this channel. Press the subscribe button down there so that you continue getting videos that I publish. So look at this longitudinal wave that has been simulated by moving a piston back and forth in a tube. At a physical level, what is happening is that when we push the piston to the right, the particles around the piston or the ones that are interfacing with the piston head get pushed and compressed. They in turn collide with the particles that are adjacent to them causing compression of this new set of particles. And I think you would have guessed that these particles then push the next set of particles adjacent to them. And this keeps recurring for all particles ahead. Well, let us not forget that the piston is moving back and forth. And as the piston moves back, it reduces the pressure around the particles in contact with it. And these particles then tend to move back towards the piston and the same chain reaction happens that the particle adjacent to these particles get an opportunity to retreat back to the left. As such, you, you can see that the entire column has particles moving in back and forth motion about a certain mean position. And the way we see is nothing but the movement of compressions along the pipe that creates the sound waves. And since pressure plays a role in creating these waves, they're often termed pressure waves. Well, if you zoom into one of the particles of the medium, what you will see is quite like the transverse wave, the particle itself is not moving ahead like the wave is. It is just oscillating about a mean position. And recall how in a transverse wave, a particle moved up and down, but did not move forward along with the wave. The only difference here is that the particle is moving back and forth along the X axis, which is also the direction of the wave. You recall that in a transverse wave, the particle moves up and down about the Y axis. So if you take a thin element of air of uh, say with delta x, it'll oscillate about a mean position. Well, in, in a transverse wave, we write the displacement of a particle as y x t, which essentially means the y displacement of particle at position x at, at any time t. Well, we can use the same idea here, but with a little difference that is the particle instead of moving up and down is moving left and right or parallel to the x-axis instead of the y-axis. So we can write the displacement as x x t. But we know that here this x represents the position of a particle from the origin, but this x is actually the displacement of a particle about its mean position that is this. So to avoid confusion, we'll put S in place of X here. So displacement of a particle about mean position is S X T. So we can write the displacement equation as follows. S X T is equal to S M cos K X minus Omega T. So S X T is the displacement here. SM is the amplitude of displacement. So let me write displacement amplitude or just let me write amplitude. And this therefore is the oscillating term. 
Well, another difference here is that lambda is interpreted a little differently here. So a longitudinal wave is basically a repeating pattern of compressions and rarefactions and the wavelength is measured as the distance from one compression to the next adjacent compression or you can say the distance from one rarefaction to the next adjacent rarefaction. So that brings us to pressure distribution across such a wave. So in a setup like this, as the wave moves ahead, pressure of air at any position x varies sinusoidally and the equation for pressure at any point can then be written as delta pxt is equal to delta pm sine of kx minus omega t and like most equations we have encountered so far we we can write that this is the pressure variation and I'll just explain what these terms mean. This is the amplitude and this then is the oscillating term. So here delta P is nothing but the pressure above or below the pressure P that would have been there in the pipe if there was no wave. So if we, if we graph this equation, what you can see is that the pressure difference is either a maxima or a minima. So let's put the two graphs, that is one for this equation and the other for this equation. So what we have here is this graph representing the displacement of the particle about its mean position and this the change in pressure at any position x. So what you can see is that the pressure difference is either a maxima or a minima when the displacement is zero and a maxima indicates a positive pressure differential or compression which essentially means that at these points the particles are coming close together and causing positive pressure. In fact you should visualize that the particles are closely clustered in such regions and are bouncing off against each other and generating pressure. And a minima indicates a negative pressure or a rarefaction. And if you were to zoom into such regions, you will see particles are far away from each other and not creating enough collisions. So you would also see that these maximas and minimas, or simply put, amplitudes of pressure happen when the displacement is zero. And these amplitudes are usually much less than the pressure P when there is no wave. Well, you'll also observe that the pressure differential becomes zero when the particle displacement is at the max. And finally, you would have already observed that the displacement and pressure variations are pi by two radians out of phase. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.